Good morning, Grace Family Church. It's a privilege for me to be here. I'm excited and I believe God is going to move. Thank you for the live claps. There is real people in the building. Thank you so much. You are all looking beautiful. And I just want to thank Auntie Margaret for commenting on my wonderful shirt. Thank you so much. It's really nice of you to just be so pleasant towards me. Thank you. Right, guys, I have a great message, I believe, because I believe it's from the Lord and He is great. And I have a message that I believe will challenge you, it will challenge me, and it will challenge us. Together we are better and in unity we are stronger. But I have a few things that I want to share. Well, I actually have about 12 points because I just don't know how much I'll get through and I have enough if we get through six. I'm sure Pastor Di eventually will let me finish the other six oh, yeah. at this point, some point this year. But I have 12 points that I want to get through. You know, I always used to kind of pride myself on not being a bullet point preacher. And then the Lord says, right, you're going to use bullet points. You be very careful at what you tell yourself you're not. Okay, because the Lord will challenge you. If you say, I'm not an overcomer, he will challenge you to overcome. If you say that I am not faithful, he will challenge you with faith. And I said that I'm not a bullet point preacher, and all, all of a sudden I have 12 bullet points. But listen, the title of this sermon is, Have I, Have You, Have we. And I'm going to go through some things here and I want to see and I hope that you do not identify yourself in any of these points. But if you do, maybe, maybe I'm reading these out specifically for you who identifies yourself within this situation. You see, I have a number of things here, and what I believe is happening in the body of Christ, again, if this is not for you, glory to God. But if it is, let's get challenged together. I want to be challenged, I'm sure you want to be challenged, and I'm sure we, as a family, want to be challenged, okay? And this is a number of, have I, have you, have we? Okay, have we replaced intimacy for entertainment? What we do in the secret place, what we do at home, typically spills out onto the streets. Have you and I replaced intimacy with our Father for entertainment? This place is not a place of entertainment. Your walk with the Lord is not to be entertained, but to be edified. He's not there to entertain you. He's there to provoke you, equip you, correct you, love you, nurture you. He's not there. He doesn't have symbols on his knees and a flute in his mouth. He's not a one-man band trying to entertain us. This Walk with the Lord is one of times of difficulty, right? He says, I will send you out like sheep amongst the wolves, okay? But what we have to do is we have to remain intimate with our Father and not get sucked into entertainment. Let me ask you a question. Again, you know this is called have I, have you, have we? Let me ask you a question. And instead of saying, have you, let me ask you a question by asking myself it. Have I, have I replaced intimacy with the Lord with five hours on YouTube? I'm not ashamed to say I like UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship. I'm not afraid to say I like boxing. I'm not afraid to say that I like listening to politics. But the problem is, None of that's changing my life. None of that puts breath in my lungs. I have to remain connected to the Father. Have you, have I, have we replaced intimacy with entertainment? Have we replaced hearing the voice of God with YouTube preachers? My sheep know my voice, he says. How often are we, how often am I, how often are you 
more inclined to switch on YouTube and listen to your favourite preacher rather than coming to your father? Have you, have I, have we? Have we fallen into a trap where it's so easy for us to wait, Pastor Dai? Is it so easy for us to wait for our Moses of the day? Our Moses of the hour to come down from the mountain and go, hey kiddies, this is what you're supposed to do. Are we waiting for our Moses or are we going up the mountain ourselves? Are we going up the mountain to meet with the Lord? Auntie Margaret, you're going to love this. I heard the Lord say, you will always, always have to ascend a mountain. He said, Andrew, I am so high. Every mountaintop I have to descend to. Imagine being so high above all things that you have to descend to the top of the mountain. Mount Everest, the highest mountain known to man. Well, actually, it is the highest mountain. Even the highest mountain on earth, the Lord, our God, has to descend to it. He's above it. Guys, we have to tune our ears into what the Lord is saying. He's speaking. Terry, he's speaking and I want in. I want in, brother. I want in and I want you to be in too. I want us all to be in. God is moving and I want in. We want in. Do you want in? God is moving. Have we replaced biblical prophecies with the BBC's PowerPoints? The BBC are telling us this, telling us that, telling the other, contradicting themselves constantly. There is no stability in contradiction. But his word is and will last forever. Let me put it to you like this. The world is sinking sand. Jesus is the rock. Who are you and I pulling on to solid ground? Have you noticed the BBC are not, pro- well, they are prophesying. Doom and gloom. But we can say, but God, it's about time we moved how our butts. It's about time we moved our butts. The world comes with negativity and we say, but God. Let's move our butts. Let's get our butts in action. Thomas, you're laughing. You know what I mean, right? Let's move our butts. Let's move our butts. The world says this, but Thomas and I, we say, but God. Let's stand on the word of God. Have we replaced contributing with consuming? Acts 20, verse 35. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Rick Warren, the man who wrote The Purpose Driven Life, he said, when we can change an audience into an army, when we can change consumers into contributors, and when we can change spectators into partakers, it will be then and only then our communities are changed. Amen. Let me think. See, this is, why, this is why I have a pastor like Pastor Dai. Never gives me a minute. <laughs> Live on TV. Say it again. Okay. Lord, help me. Rick Warren said, if we can change an audience into an army, if we can change consumers into contributors, and if we can change spectators into partakers, it will be then and only then our communities are changed. Amen. Guys, we have everything the world is searching for. We have everything that they are searching for. Thing is, they don't know it until we show them. Okay? They don't know it until we show them. The world is separate. And we need, we've been given a gift of reconciliation. Who is Jesus? And we can reconcile them through Jesus back to the Father. Have we replaced contributing with consuming. Have we replaced fasting 
with fast food. Now, you may say, well, well, actually, Andrew, I don't go to any fast food restaurants. Okay, let's take that bit out. Have we replaced spiritual food for earthly food? Do we find our comfort and our assurance and our peace and our rest? Does our earthly food change how we feel? What I mean by that is, you know, there's people who are, um, there is people that need to do specific things to change how they feel. Okay, and that means you're dependent on that thing. Do you know what I mean? If, if you need ice cream to make you feel better on a bad day, you're dependent, dependent on sugar. Do you know what I mean? Have we replaced eating the bread of life, who by the way is Jesus, Jesus and by the way is, it's great for keto, it's great for vegans, it's great for vegetarians, it's great for meat lovers. He is the best meal. Zero calories on the midriff and masterful spiritual benefits. He is the bread that I choose to eat. Eat it up. You won't get digestion, but you run the risk of revelation. Carlos, you liked that, didn't you? Yeah. Amen, brother. Stamp your feet, mate. Come on. Amen. We won't get, <laughs> we won't get in the digestion, but we run the risk of revelation. Keep eating spiritual food. Yeah. Keep coming to the table. I love the fact that Jesus invites us to the table before he puts us into the team. Yeah. Have we replaced... Gratitude and thanksgiving with complaining. That's always one that's pretty relevant for the body of Christ. Again, have I, have you, have we? Think about it. This is, I'm speaking to you corporately and individually. I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to me, I'm speaking to us. Have you, have I, have we changed our gratitude for a selfish attitude? You see, Jesus and the Israelites spent time in the same wilderness. Some were there for 40 years and some were there for 40 days. Wait, well, sorry, some were there for 40 years and Jesus was there for 40 days. Same wilderness, different attitude. You see, complaining could keep you in a place for 40 years, but going there selflessly onto God could get you through a situation much more quickly. Jesus went into the wilderness with one purpose, to seek the will of the Father. 40 days, 40 nights. And it's said that he came out hungry. Guys, do you know I'm really passionate when I preach the gospel because I know that everything I'm saying here right now is for me. <laughs> like, I need this. I need to hear what I'm saying. And I'm just thankful that I can. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Okay? So when you proclaim it, you can hear it. So it's not just for the people who are listening per se in front, it's for me. I can hear what I'm saying and I need to change my attitude in certain areas. I need to lay off the cheesecake and get onto the bread of life in certain areas. I need to put Jesus first, stop complaining, stop grumbling, stop binging and seek him in the secret place so when I step out onto the public, people will say, You've been with him. Because what we do in the secret place will be rewarded in the open. Are you enjoying this? Because I am. I am. Thank you. <laughs> guys, I know you guys who are watching on YouTube and stuff, listen, I won't apologize for the joy that I have. Jesus has changed my life and he can change your life too. I used to be a very miserable man. 
tormented and he set me free and I've, I'm over myself now. And I know the scripture says that I can raise the dead, but I ain't raising the old Andrew Cannon back to life. He's not a nice man. So I'm full of the joys of the Lord. And I love him. I love him. Have we replaced biblical truth with the media's conspiracies? Which is quite the same as the one I've just read before. But listen to this. Proverbs 4.23 says this. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Proverbs 4.23. I do believe that's the message translation. What are we letting in? Do you know this may sound on the face of things almost unbiblical? It's less concerning what you let in than what you let out. You're not defiled by what goes in, you're defiled by what comes out your mouth. Okay, now, that's not to say you open yourself up to everything. Now, open yourself up to one spirit, the spirit of the living God, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of peace, love, patience, kindness, joy, all this. This, amen. <laughs> Kids got it, amen, come on. We are not to open ourselves up to these conspiracies. Okay, actually, can I just be completely honest? Because it's always a good thing, right? Yeah. I read some of them and I think, I actually see that as like, there's some truth in that. I actually read them and I think it's absolutely wacky. But I can see what they're saying. But if we are going to believe everything we read, hello? Get into the 66 books of the Bible. If you're going to believe everything you read, I suggest you read the 974,000 verses in the Old and the New Testament. And believe it, and then apply it into our life. Never in my life have I seen a canopy of this unity and opinions and fear over a nation we're putting our trust in a pr in a prime presence as we say in a prime minister listen we need to be careful that again richard my brother please understand me when i say this and i know you'll agree with me we need to be careful that we don't create boris johnson and our nhs as a golden calf We're not worshipping them. We appreciate them. We worship the one true God. Okay? We worship the one true God. And we have to keep our minds sharp and focused on what the Lord is saying. On what He is saying. You see, because the people of the world are filled with the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of the world is sensual demonic and rebellious against God okay now again I don't know what it is but I always I'm, I'm just going into the season past that I wait I'm, I feel I need to be extremely careful how I speak these things because sometimes in my passion and I'm sure you guys have heard me minister enough times sometimes in my passion for one thing it can sound like I'm disrespecting another I'm not disrespecting the NHS glory to God my brother-in-law there Neil just lift up your hand his daughter my niece works in the ICU I'm not I see the front line she's on because we hear the stories my brother Richard I see and I hear the front line that you're on we're not disrespecting them but to put anything or anyone before the Lord there in that moment we've created an idol no one will come before our Lord every knee will bow every tongue will confess that he is lord by his stripes we were healed not by science again disclaimer 
because I feel like the Lord's pressing it on me. I'm not against science. Glory to God for scientists. There's one in the Bible, right? There's a physician. Glory to God. But right through scriptures from start to end is we are to put our trust in one. And that is him only. Do not consume yourselves or allow yourselves to be consumed with conspiracy. But allow yourself to be consumed with conviction of the word of God. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Have we, in this season, have we individually or corporately, have I, have, have I, have you, have we, have we replaced the mission for maintenance? Have we replaced mission for maintenance? You may say, Andrew, what do you mean? Okay. Are we more focused on what the Lord is saying in this season? Or are we more focused of getting from Sunday to Sunday? Are we more focused in what we're doing Sunday to Sunday? If that is the case, and I don't just speak corporately as our home church, I speak individually as each congregational member. Are we focusing on the seven days ahead and that's it? Now I know the Lord says, you know, we can guide, we can plan our steps, but the Lord ordains them, the Lord provides our steps. And the Lord says, you know, we don't know the day, the hour, or the month, or the week, or the minute. Yet he's going to come back. But I'm saying to you that the Lord is asking us to lift up our eyes. And to look out and to hear what he is saying. Because, again, I know the Lord is listening to every word I'm saying. But I believe. And I'm thankful that I believe this. That we can go into the greatest season in the Lord that Grace Family Church has ever had. You see, because our trust is in Him, not in us. Okay? That's some comfort right there, right? You wanna, I always say this, you want to know how big God is? Look around. Look at the people who He's using. We are very small. He's very big. The sooner we realise that, the better. We need to, yes, bring structure. No one would vote for a dysfunctional president, prime minister. No one would willingly put their children in a dysfunctional school. So why would we want a dysfunctional Sunday service? We wouldn't. We wouldn't. Why would we want a dysfunctional Sunday to Sunday? We wouldn't. So of course we put in structure. But that is just the cradle. That is just the vessel for the Lord to fill. And I just want us to just continue to press in with the things of the Lord and not get caught up with what's going on out there. Be in the world, albeit 1.5 meters away from the world. Be in it, but not of it. Okay? Go into the world as much as you can, governmental restrictions, behind a mask, wearing a smile. Smile with your eyes, they can say. Smile with your eyes. That's what they say. Smile with your eyes. We have this opportunity right now in a world that is full of fear. Full of anxiety. Do you know I heard another statistic? That 400,000 people have already lost their jobs and they don't know it. As soon as this furlough completely stops, there is companies that can not sustain their outcomes. There is 400,000 people. So the statistics say. That are going to lose their, that have already lost their jobs and they don't know it. So what I'm going to do. I want to stand here right now and speak directly against that. We ask that that report be cancelled right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray and we stand in agreement that not only 
Will 400,000 jobs be kept? We ask, Lord, that 4 million more receive employment. Because you see, we have the power God given all of us, all authority in heaven and on earth. I have, I now give unto you. Therefore, we are Christians, Christ irons, little Jesuses, little Christ, operating in his power. And I stand here with the most simplest of faith, whether I have a ton of it or whether I have a, a mustard seed of it, I stand here and declare cancellation over that report. No, you will not lose your job. And not only will you not lose your job, you'll receive a pay rise. Why not? In for a penny, in for a pound, eh? God says it. We speak it. The Lord, not only do we ask that employment goes up, we ask that the national minimum wage goes up with it. Why not? We have not because we ask that. In fact, Lord, if it's your will, bang that minimum wage up to £20 a week. If it's your will, £20 an hour, should I say. Woo! We cancel that report, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Whoa! Everyone stood up. We're about to leave. Come back. I'm for you. I'm not against you. But do you see? Let's speak positivity. Let's get the faith. Let's get the love and the belief what's in our head and in our hearts out of our mouth to our community. Whoa, I'm preaching myself hot. Okay. I'm going to finish with this. Yeah, I'm going to finish with this. Can I encourage me, you, us, to go into the secret place and allow the presence of Almighty God to audit our character with his scripture. We take cars for an MOT, right? When was the last time you plugged yourself in? When was the last time you had a ruthless assessment of where you're at in the Lord? I feel like I've just had one publicly. I endeavoured to go into the secret place today, Pastor I publicly. So that was me with me and my Jesus in the secret place. Welcome to my secret place. Can I ask you, for the sake of the lost children of God. For the sake of the broken, the downcast, the downtrodden. For the sake of the lowly in spirit, for the sake of the contrite, for the sake of your own loved ones. Can I ask you to have a ruthless assessment of where you're at with the Lord? And go into the secret place so that we come out looking completely different. I need it. I need him. I need to be different. I need to be different. Some of you found that very hard to believe, but I, I understand. I, I do understand that. But believe me, I know me better than you, okay? I need change in my life. And I'm sure you do too. Who wants change in their life? Can you lift up your hands? Smile behind your masks, please. Glory to God. I'm going to pray for you. I want you to put your hand on your heart, just symbolically. And I want you to pray. I want you to repeat this. Say, Father God, change me. Help me to become more like you. Help me to become a mouthpiece of heaven. Help me to step out of maintenance and into mission. Help me to deflect conspiracies and receive scriptural truth. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. Awesome.